Okay, uh, welcome back. So today, we're going to talk about creating different level layouts, uh, meaning different board layouts for different levels that you want to have, um, while still using the exact same scene, uh, rather than creating different scenes with a different copy of the board on every scene, we can just use the one copy of the board that we have and then use a scriptable object to load in what we want the layout of the board to be. Um, we could also do this using uh, a JSON file. We could use it using a custom.bin file. We could do this using uh, even like an XML file. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that we can do something similar. I like using scriptable objects because they're native to Unity and they use slightly less memory than using a JSON file. Uh, it's not a whole lot less memory and if you're more comfortable with JSON you can do something incredibly similar with that. So, but before we do that we need to have a little conversation about the architecture of the game. So, I made this real little web here super fast in Google Slides. So what we essentially want is we want some world and this world is going to contain all of the levels that we have. And you can have as many levels as you want. I just put three here as an example. So Candy Crush probably has thousands of them. So our world contains these levels and then our scene, depending on which um, version of the scene that we're loading. We're only keeping one scene, but depending on a variable that's decided when you load the scene is going to pull data from one of these levels. And it's going to know which level to pull data from by some information we're going to pass forward through the level select screen, which we're getting to next. Um, but today we're going to talk about how we can have these multiple levels. So we have our world, and the world contains levels, and the scene grabs a level from the world depending on information that's sent forward from the level select screen. So, let's get to this. Okay, so here we are back in our project. Now, scriptable objects are scripts that can act as game objects, but they're never loaded into a scene. They exist outside of a scene. In fact, they can't be loaded into a scene. So, in order to keep everything kind of separate here, I'm going to do a little bit of organization first. So in my scripts folder, I'm going to create a new folder inside of there. And this folder is going to be for scriptable objects. Now inside my scriptable objects folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp script. And I'm going to call this world. You can call it whatever you want to, but this is taking up that place in the hierarchy of an object in our game's architecture that holds the information for all of the levels and that the board class is going to be accessing on runtime to decide which of the levels it should load in. So this is our world. I'm also going to create another script, a C Sharp script, and that's going to be called, uh, I'm going to call it level. So C Sharp script level. Okay. Now, like I said, we're not attaching these to anything in the scene because we're going to make some modifications to these scripts that make it so that you can't attach it to the scene. So let's open up our world first here. Now, uh, I'm going to let my Visual Studio open up because I didn't open it up ahead of time. I will meet you back here. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. Now, the main change that I'm going to make that's going to make it so that you can't attach this to anything in the world is has to do with inheritance and I haven't really talked too much about inheritance in this entire project because I haven't needed to. Um, inheritance is a way in object-oriented programming that you can take qualities of another script, carry them forward to a new script, but then have that new script also have extra qualities. Um, for example, in like a, a game, you might want all of your characters to have a name. Uh, and you might want all of them to have hit points, but only some of them would have um, mana points. And so you'd have like a, a generic script for character, and then your script for a mage would inherit all of the qualities of a character, but then also add magic points. It's kind of like a, like a um, squares and rectangles things, where every square is a rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares. Um, so we're going to change this from being a mono behavior to being a scriptable object. So we're going to inherit from 
Unity scriptable objects. And this is unique to Unity. Scriptable objects don't apply, as far as I know, anywhere else in C Sharp. Um, this is part of Unity's architecture. Now, the magic part about uh, a scriptable object, what, first of all, they don't take a start or an update method, so we'll just get rid of those because we don't need them, um, is we're going to add a tag to this. And the tag is create asset menu, and then we have to tell it uh, a file name, a menu name, and then as an optional, we can give it an order. So I'm gonna say file name equals, uh, I'll just call this world, and then uh, menu name equals, I'll call this world as well. And then, yeah. Oh, I need to do it as a string. What am I thinking? So world, menu name, world. And I'll show you what these two things do in just one second here. All right, cool. So I'm gonna save my script, I'm gonna pop back into Unity. And in my main asset folder, I'm gonna create a new folder that is going to hold our level architecture in it. And I'm just gonna call this folder, um, kind of giving away the game there. I'm gonna call this folder uh, scriptable objects. Now, by creating this asset menu here, we're now able to create a new version of the scriptable object inside of our uh, asset folder, but we can't attach it to anything in the scene. So, and it, it's kind of neat the way it does it because it kind of bakes it right in. If you right click now and go to create, you'll see that we have world. This is the, um, the menu name. And I'm just gonna keep it world. Now we don't have any information in here yet, but I can add information. So my world is going to contain an array of levels. So I'm going to make this public and level array, and I'm going to call it levels. I'm going to save that. If I pop back into Unity here, uh, I'll see that my world, as soon as it's done compiling, will have a place for me to add my levels to. Now I haven't turned my levels into a scriptable object yet. I'll do that in just a second, but now I can have a whole bunch of levels. And like I said, Candy Crush has like a thousand or something. Um, all right, so now I wanna go to my scripts and my scriptable objects, and I wanna open up my level script. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna turn this from a mono behavior to a scriptable object. scriptable object, and I'm gonna create the asset menu again. So create asset menu, file name equals world, menu name equals level. And again, scriptable objects can't access start or update. They do access on enable and on disable, but we're not gonna be using those. Um, okay, cool, so I'm gonna save this. Now if I go back to Unity in my scriptable object folder that I created to hold the actual objects themselves, um, the one that's inside the scripts class just holds the script for them. The one that's in the asset folder is holding the actual scriptable objects. I'm gonna right click, create, and I'm gonna create a level. And I'm gonna call this level Level one. Now if I go back into world here, actually, let me make a few of these. Duplicate this a few times. So I'm only gonna make three levels here. You can make however many you want. Um, I'm going to lock this down, grab my three levels, and pull them in. And there we go, I've got level one, level two, and level three. Um, now, I want to be able to access the world from my board class. So I'm gonna open up my board class again, which I think I already have open from last time. I do. Um, and I'm gonna make a reference to that world object. Uh, I'm gonna make it public so that I can just um, assign it in the editor. So public world, and I'm just gonna call it world. I'm gonna save this. 
hop back into Unity here, let it compile for a second, and then I'll grab the board object and assign my world to it. So board object wants to know what the world is. And there's the world. So now, even though I couldn't assign this script directly to an object, I can create an object from that scriptable object, and then I can have objects in the scene reference back to that. Um, so, I mean, it, it's kind of, kind of neat, I think. Uh, one thing I want to show you really quickly here is one thing that people get used to in Unity is if you make changes in play mode, it doesn't carry through to uh, the regular mode. However, with scriptable objects, if I change this size from 3 to 0, and I go out of play mode, that change is going to stay. So, I mean, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. You just want to make sure that if you're making any kind of change to a scriptable object, because it's not in the scene, um, changes to that scriptable object will stay. This is only true for the editor. Um, if you want to try to use a scriptable object for a save system, that's not going to work because changes made to scriptable objects during runtime on an actual device don't carry over. Um, okay, cool. So I've got my three different levels here. And uh, each level doesn't have any information in it yet. But I want to know specifically what I want to carry through level to level. What makes one level different than another? So if I look at my board class here, it's going to be the width and the height. I'm not going to mess around with the offset. I could mess around with which dots are available. For example, I could make some levels have more or fewer dots. Um, so width, height, dots. Um, I could make different destroy particles. Board layout is the big one. Um, and then also score goals. So width, height, dots, board layout, score goals. I can also change the uh, base piece value. So in here, in my level script, Let's first do width and height. So public integer width and public integer height. So I'm going to call these, I'm going to um, be a little neater than I have been in the past. And I'm going to make a tag for these. And I'm going to call them uh, board um, dimensions. Cool. Uh, I'm going to make uh, a board layout class or a board layout array. Mm, did I not make board layout public? Let's see. Board. Where did I? Oh, I called it tile type. That's why. Um, okay, so back in level public tile type, and I'll call this void layout, and I'll add a header to this as well. Um, this is going to be um, starting tiles, maybe. That sounds good. Um, I'm going to make an array of dots as well. So public game object dots and this is an array so was that tile type okay so this is going to be header available dots okay and then I want the score goals too so public what did I call those in board my score goals. Oh, yeah, they're just integers. Public integer array score goals. Score goals. Okay, cool. I'm going to save this. Now, because I made three different ones, uh, when I go back into Unity here and take a look at my levels, I can make three different boards in those scriptable objects. Um, so level one, I'm going to have this be seven by seven. My starting board layout is going to be exactly as it is. My dots that are going to be available um, 
I'm going to have four different kinds of dots. And in my prefabs, uh, sorry, let's go back to where I was. Level one, piece prefabs. Uh, let's do green dot. Let's do dark green dot. I'm probably picking some that have the weird colors, but I'm just kind of doing this to show. And salmon dot. And then my score goals here, I'm going to have three of them. They're going to be really small. We'll do 100, 400, 600. All right, so this is level one. Now, um, levels uh, two and three. I'm going to do something similar, except I'm going to make a change so I know that they're different. So this is going to be 6 by 8. Um, I'm going to have 5 dots available, and I'm going to have 3 score goals. I'm going to make these really big. And 7,000. And then for my dots here, I'll go to my piece prefabs. Do this one. This one. This one, this one, and this one. All right, and now for my last level. I'm gonna make my board super small here. Let's do four by four. Um, I'm not gonna change the board layout, and no, let's do four different possible dots. My pre pre piece prefabs, dark green, green, Indigo, yeah, and orange. And then I'll have one score goal here, which is 100. All right, cool. So I've got my three different levels here. If I look to my scriptable objects, they're noticeably different in their dimensions, and they're all tagged to through the world. Now, I need to have a variable in the board class to know which of those levels I want to access. And for now, I'm going to be setting this directly in the inspector. But in the future, um, we're going to be doing this through code. So I'm just going to make a quick little header here to organize my board class a bit more. And I'm going to call this um, scriptable object stuff. So I got world. I'm going to make a public integer for level. And then, yeah, I should organize some of this other stuff here. Let's do header um, board dimensions. Let's do header prefabs. Um, <laughs> Header layout. Okay. And then I don't have to do a header for these because private things don't show up. So it's okay for now. It's, it's not super great, but it's okay for now. So I want to assign some stuff before I even hit start. So I'm going to be using awake for this. So void awake. If you're not certain what awake is, uh, I have a cheat sheet that I'll link to in this that kind of tells you the the way that these ingrown methods are accessed in Unity. W awake, I think, is this either the second or third method that an object activates when it gets turned on. I think on enable comes first, and I want to say that there's one more that comes before that, and then it's awake, and then it's start. Um, so start isn't the very very first one but it's used for most initialization things here we're going to be using uh, awake to see if there's a world that's been assigned if there is a world that's been assigned we're going to access the level that corresponds to the level number that we have and then we're going to assign everything in the editor to be equal to those things from the level so uh, we're going to say if world, oops, is not null. Um, if world dot levels, and the level that we want to get is level, 
is not null, so if that level exists, then now we want to go about changing stuff. So, for example, we want to change our width and height. So I'm going to go to board. We're going to say width is equal to world.levels uh, level dot width height equals world dot levels level height so that's going to change the width and height to be whatever it's supposed to be so in this case I'm going to save this really fast and I should see a change really really fast so for example here um, my level 2 I think is the one that was 7 by 7 no 6 by 8 let's go with level 1 level 1 is 7 by 7 by default right now my board is 6 by 8 so I'm gonna say that it should be um, level 2 which is really 1 Wait, is level 2 the 7 by 7 no geez um, it should be level 1 which is position 0 in the array so I'm gonna say the level is 0 now when I hit play I should see these numbers change from 6, 8 to 7, 7. And I got an index out of range exception. What did I do wrong? Oh, generate blank spaces, that's why. Um, for now, I'm going to take my board layout and I'm going to make that zero. Uh, the reason I got an index out of range exception is because I was trying to make. Um, something a blank tile that was outside of the size of this new board that I'm making. So let's try this again. There we go. And so there's my new board, seven by seven. Now, if I change this from uh, level zero to level two, which is gonna be the third place in that array, and I hit play, you should see the board change again. And there we go. So this is how we can change the size of the board to be different every time. What we want to do uh, next, oh wait, 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 one more thing, that camera scaler. When was I calling that? Okay, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, one second. <laughs> Are you two playing Dorte? Huh? Come here, Ethan. All right, you stay there. Okay, sorry about that weird um, cut. Okay, so back in our board here, we're just setting the width and height though. So let's change more. Let's change our uh, starting tiles, our dots, and our score goals. So back in board, we're gonna say our dots are equal to world.levels level dot dots and score goals world dot levels level oops dot score goals and what's the other thing oh the board layout board layout is equal to world dot levels level dot board layout okay so we're changing all of these now now we should be able to to see the, um, the actual boards themselves change. So I'm gonna let that compile for a second. I'm gonna hit play. And our pieces are gonna fall in. Okay. All right, cool. And yeah, I totally used one I shouldn't have used, but there we go. So now we're using different pieces on this level than we would have on another one. Now, there's more things we wanna do here though. Um, for one, we're not changing the endgame condition, so we're going to have to have the endgame condition access the levels as well. 
and for two, um, we are not changing the level requirements. So let's go into Visual Studio here, into our levels class, and we want to change our end game requirements. So from the end game manager, we're going to grab the um, end game requirements. So let's do header end game requirements and we're going to say uh, public end game requirements end game requirements that's super wordy i way prefer to be wordy with my variables than the opposite so sorry about that uh, and then we want to look at our level goals here as well so did i call it goal manager yeah i did um, so I want to also make the goals. So public blank goal, and this should be an array. We'll call this level goals. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. I'm going to go to my scriptable objects objects, not the one that's in the scripts folder. I'm going to let that compile for a second. Let's look at level one. So my end game requirements, I'm going to make this moves and we'll make it 60. And for level goals, I'm going to have just one goal. And that one goal, let's say that I need, I don't know, 10. And for my sprite, I'm going to use the blue candy, which I think is indigo dot. Uh, on level two. Okay, so let's make sure I have these different. So that's move 60. I'm going to make this one a timer. And we'll make it 100 seconds and no goals. Well, no, no, let's make goals. Because everything's kind of hinging on the goals. So we'll make two goals here. Uh, number needed two. Sprite. We'll use the blue candy. And. I feel like I'm going really fast with this. So if I'm going too fast, please let me know. See, we need five of those. And we'll do, and we want this to be breakable. And then on my third level, I'm gonna go moves, we're gonna go 10, and one goal, and it's seven of this candy with this match value. All right, cool. So now, if I hit play, oh, hey, hey, I haven't actually assigned those, so nothing's gonna change if I hit play. All right, cool, so let's assign these. So in my, um, oops, there we go. So in my end game manager, which is where I have, um, the end game requirements. I'm also going to reference my um, my world. Am I already? I am already referencing my board. Do I want to? Yeah, yeah. I'll do it this way. So in here, I'm going to say uh, public. Actually, I don't need to do that because the board already knows what the world is. So then I'm going to make a little method here. Sorry if this seems scattered. Um, so I'm just going to make another method that's going to be accessed in the start method. We'll call this void set um, game type. And then in here, I want to grab the level goals from the board because the board's already been assigned. So I'm going to say uh, requirements. Oh, actually, let's check to make sure that everything isn't null. If board.world isn't null. And then if board.world.levels board.level isn't null. 
then I want to say requirements are equal to, what did I call them in my level? In game requirements are equal to board dot world dot levels board dot level dot end game requirements okay and I want to add set game type um, right before setup game set game type so that that happens before we assign the sprites and everything. Um, and then I want to go to my goal manager here. And before I set up goals, this needs to have a reference to the board as well. So private board board. And then in the start method, board equals find object of type board and then I'll make another little method here void um, get goals uh, first we're going to check to make sure that board isn't uh, null if board is not null then we're going to check to make sure that the world isn't null oops board dot world is not null. Then we're going to check to make sure the level isn't null. Word dot world dot levels board dot level. Oops, it's not equal to null. Then we're going to change our um, level goals to be equal to the level goals that are part of that level. So. Level goals are equal to uh, board dot world dot levels board dot level dot level goals. All right, cool. So yeah, that should be enough. Um, let's test this out. It's been a while since I tested this. I I did this on my own game. Um, months ago and this is the same way I did it there but I haven't redone it since then so okay let's put ourselves at level zero and then let's see if this works okay so that's not what it should be and neither is that but this is fine uh, if I look at my my end game manager, moves 60, so that turned fine. My goal manager, did I not call it from the goal manager? Am I that dumb? <laughs> yeah, I am that dumb. Okay, so get goals. There we go. Save that. Pop back in the Unity here. I'll hit play, and the goal should change, which should change on screen. Um, okay, cool. So, all right, we need to, to work on how that's resizing itself a little bit there. Um, let's look at this really fast. Do, 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 do. Goal prefab. Goal container. Child control size. Uh-oh. Okay, gosh, these things, they never make any sense to me. All right, anyway, uh, let's just play. Um, okay, so I need 10 blue things. There are no blue things in here, so that's an issue. And there's another issue that some people have noticed. Um, I should have gotten a, an adjacent bomb there, but I didn't. Um, we're gonna fix that relatively soon. Uh, okay, cool. So, all right, cool. Let's change the level here. And that really bugs me, that uh, squishing out. We'll have to fix that soon. Uh, I want to go to my board. I'm going to change to level one. And level one here. Yeah, see, it's fine with two things. But with one thing, it was not fine. 
That's weird. Anyway, so I need two of those and five of those, but I don't have five of these on here, but let's make sure that it's at least tracking. Yeah. All right, cool. And time's counting down. All right, and let's try the last one. Let's try level two. And if I hit play. All right, cool. So I need seven of those. So let me play really quickly here and see if it'll trigger a uh, game win thingy thing with the thing and the two things. Um, all right, I might speed. Oh, no, no, I don't need to speed it up. All right, cool. Sweet. I remembered I won. All right, cool. So um, one thing that I think is really cool about this is since we have all of these default values in here, if I, for whatever reason, level gets put to like negative one or if it got put to something that's outside of how many levels are here, what you have in your board here can act as a default level structure. So like if by default you want your, um, oh, hey, no, it doesn't. Um, hmm, that's weird. I thought that would protect against that. Let's see, no reference, hint manager, find all matches. End game manager, set game type. Yeah, it's these three things that we just made. Uh, so let me fix that really quickly here. Board 65. Oh, okay. I'm checking to see if it's null. Um, and I'm not checking to make sure that it's... Uh, it's where it should be. So instead of checking to make sure that it's not null, uh, let's also add another condition here. So if it's not null, um, yeah, I'm just going to add this as an if here. Um, if level is less than world.levels.length. So that's not going to protect against the negative one. It'll protect against one that's bigger. Um, so what I'm doing here is adding another check just to make sure that the level is um, inside the, the range uh, between zero and however long this is. So let's do absolute value maybe. Math F dot... No, 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 no. Come on now. Why would you think I wanted that? Okay, so if the absolute value of the level is less than, no, that doesn't actually protect me either. And I misspelled math F anyway. Let's just leave it like this and let's say that that negative condition is never gonna happen. So I'm gonna copy this we're going to go to the end game manager. I have set game type. Uh, I'm going to paste that right there. Finish that off. And this should be board.levels. Board.level is less than board.world.levels.length. Copy this again. And go to my goal manager and set that there. All right, cool. So now, let's not do the negative one version of me trying to screw it up. Let's do the nine version um, as soon as it's done compiling. So yeah, level 99. If I hit play now, I shouldn't get those weird null reference exceptions. Instead, there we go. I get my default values. So I get my default goals, I get my default board layout, uh, I get everything defaulted. So you can have one default position for everything, and then if for whatever reason your level call goes outside of what your levels actually are, you can have it be that instead. So if I go back to level two here and hit play, um, everything should be fine. Yeah, except for that being all squished out. 
Okay, cool. So there we go. Um, next, we're gonna talk about creating a level select screen so that we can pass the information forward about which level we're on. Um, and then after that, it's really kind of just finishing up. Uh, we'll have a level select, we'll make a beginning game screen, a pause menu, and then we're going to talk about how we can juice the game and make it a little more interesting to play. Um, that'll include animations, uh, maybe a little bit of screen shake, maybe a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration. We'll see. Um, but we're kind of nearing the end here, so thank you very much if you've hung around for the whole thing. That's kind of awesome. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them down below. If you uh, want to, you can follow me on Twitter to find out exactly when I post a new video. You can uh, join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.